first up on Saturday morning, please, Hurricanes. A again, you know, the Hurricanes, they're running away with this conference. Yeah, um, amazing stuff that they've mm. produced this season. They've made a lot of changes from match to match to match. New Zealand policy of resting players. Never really had the same uh, lineup for any two consecutive mm. matches. But against a, a Blues team, again, obviously, having beaten the Bulls last weekend, they'll be on a little bit of a high. But the, the, that Hurricanes team just looks amazing to me. Mm. You know, they can wrap up the New Zealand Conference and secure a... And they must be, sorry to interrupt, yeah. Jared, like some serious sort of internal battles for all black shirts. I uh, mean, we, we, you know, we've got our own sort of s sort of speculations on who's going to make the World Cup squad, the All Blacks. Yeah. I mean, they've yeah, got so much talent to choose from they've this got season. They're blessed with amazing depth mm. and talent in so many positions. It's, it's actually a crying shame for me that so many top class players are going to be you know we're going to be deprived seeing them at the rugby mm. world cup just because they're not good enough to be a first choice in in each position mm. so you know we could the list is endless we could spend all morning going through the players that we won't be seeing at the rugby world cup that would have make pretty much every single other squad mm. but because new zealand have, have now built this incredible depth um you know th that we just simply won't see them mm. so the hurricanes you know look out for people like um um julian Sevier, um corey jane I think Conrad Smith is he might be sitting out this weekend. Yeah, he's, he's, he's been given a uh, rest. Ma Nanu, just amazing, amazing depth mm. and talent that they've got. They're a pleasure to watch. Always right up there in the try scoring charts. And this should be a good game. You know, the Blues obviously don't have a lot to lose. They hopefully will throw the ball around a little bit. They've also had a l number of injuries to contend with. But I see the Hurricanes winning this match, securing the top spot in the New Zealand Conference, securing the, the top spot in the overall conference. I mean, the playoffs are going to go through Wellington. Mm you want to win this tournament you're going to have to beat the, the hurricanes at home which won't be an easy task everyone else has found out that this year i think the only game they've lost is against the waratahs if i stand correct rob um but in in sydney so very very tough team to beat um, in wellington so i see them winning this game again it could be a high scoring game if they do choose to throw the ball around a bit wouldn't be surprised again if the Warat uh, wellington uh, the hurricane sorry picked up the five point bonus point for scoring four tries so for me, Hurricanes by six or seven. Okay. Rob, the midday game on Saturday, arguably the game of the weekend, <coughs> a repeat of last year's final, the Waratahs against the Crusaders. And the Crusaders have got s a serious lineup, a lot of their big names back. Carter McCall, Romano, Owen Franks, Dag, to name a few. Yeah, um, this is this is the, the perhaps the, the snag game uh, in, in, in one Super Brew planning. Uh, difficult to know which way to go because the Waratahs have been so hard to, to predict this year. Um, they're very up and down. Um, and the Crusaders, of course, uh, are this team who a few weeks ago we were all saying, oh, well, the Crusaders are pretty much out of it. Perhaps it was a stupid thing to have, to have said, really, because we always know that they, they mm. somehow always produce a charge, don't they? Even if uh, they've had a pretty rocky season, um, come that sort of uh, that run-in period just ahead of the playoffs, the, the Crusaders always still have that self-belief that they can keep picking up wins. And often when they do pick up wins, it's usually of the four-try variety yeah. or more. Well, I mean, the last <laughs> game, you know, a game that can really make a statement. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, no. So they're, um, you know, they, they they are back in the picture. Um, wouldn't surprise me too much if they take this one. Of course, a repeat of the of the final last year. Um, chance for a bit of uh, revenge. Uh, remember the uh, the sort of Craig Joubert inspired um, that penalty uh, that that uh, still rankles uh, with the with the Crusaders to this day. Uh, they'll definitely have that uh, a little mental note about that uh, in the back of their minds uh, for this one. Um, I don't know. I'm perhaps a little bit inclined towards the Crusaders if they if they produce their A game. Uh, maybe it, it will be a little bit too much for a fairly inconsistent Waratahs team. Mm. And then next up, Force Highlanders. Maximum points for Highlanders? You would think maybe so. <laughs> you would think so. Look, the, the Highlanders got their, their South African tour um, back on track. You can call this a tour. Uh, this, is, this is almost like the last fixture of their tour because they stop off in Perth en route mm. home. Um, and so they'll want to go two from three on tour. Remember, they botched their first game at, uh, uh, in Johannesburg. Um, and then came roaring back uh, to, to absolutely trounce the, the cheetahs in Bloemfontein. So they'll be feeling pretty sort of hale and hearty again, um, definitely fancying a, a win in Perth. That said, um, the force at home um, sometimes produce uh, one of those real sort of, uh, you know, up and atom sort of performances. Mm. They are capable of knocking over just about anybody uh, in Perth if the mood really grabs them. But you've probably got to up say the on paper. As the <laughs> <always says. laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, th I think you probably smart money tells you that the, the Highlanders should should win and cement their own sort of playoffs charge among several other New Zealand teams. So I, I would certainly be going going Highlanders on this one.